My name is Mauro Binella. In this presentation, which is dedicated to IT administrators, I will show you how a school or university could integrate IT Academy with new or existing user directories like Microsoft Live Platform, Windows Azure Active Directory, or on-premises Active Directory or LDAP. More practically, I will implement a scenario where IT Academy uses Office 365 for managing its users, which in turn relies on Shibboleth acting as identity provider. In other words, the users are defined locally and are synchronized to the cloud. However, their passwords remain on-premises only. The IT Academy platform assigns training plans to the synchronized Azure AD users in the cloud, while authentication is delegated to the on-premises federation server. In our case today, our federation server is a shibboleth, which could be very easily replaced by the Microsoft ADFS Active Directory Federation server. Our shibboleth version runs on Windows and relies on Active Directory, but even in this case, Active Directory could be replaced by OpenLDAP or other user directories. Finally, we are talking about IT Academy service in this presentation, but the authentication mechanism is exactly the same for other services like Office 365, CRM Online, Windows Intune, Azure Applications, or even your own applications. Now, for our example, I want to assign a training plan to the new user, Patricia Black, which still does not exist either on-premises or in the cloud. This doesn't matter right now, and I can perfectly assign a training plan to Patricia. I just have to log on the portal as IT Academy Administrator, add the user to the list, and assign a training plan. Of course, this user will not be able to log on the web platform before she is created on Office 365. Thing that we will do right after. So, I will now log on as administrator using a Windows Live ID provided by the Microsoft Live platform because that's the account I chose when I subscribed this IT Academy subscription for the first time. I click here on the left on Go for administrators and instructors. I click on Continue and I log in on the Windows Live platform. As soon as I'm in, as said, I will add the user to the list and assign the training plan to her. I go here. I have some test users on the left, but I'm, I want to create a new user, which is Patricia. Black. Patricia Black at ship domain. This is a domain that I own, which is federated. We will see it in a minute. I click on save, and then I have to do one very important thing in this case. I have to click on migrate to Office 365 platform. And I have to put the same email address that I wrote there above. The reason why I, I do this thing is because this field exists to allow binding two accounts eventually, Live ATDU plus Office 365 accounts, if they are owned by the same person. However, when a user is created on Office 365 for the first time, we just needed to write the email address twice, as I'm doing here. So I click on Save, and now I go to Learning Plans and assign a learning plan to Patricia. I select the learning plan I, cre I created before Office 365 in this case, and then I add Patricia as a user. So Patricia Black is here, I click on there, and then I click on Continue and save, and assign. OK. Let's create the user now. Here I have the main controller, so I just have to create the user Patricia. UPN, and then the password. Well, the user is created. Now, as soon as 
this uh, user is created, she should be synchronized to the cloud. This could be done automatically by the Microsoft Directory Synchronization tool, dear sync for friends, which must be installed uh, on a member server of the same domain. In my case, I haven't installed the dear sync for this test, so I will do it manually with PowerShell. Now, I won't go in details for this step, because it may vary case by case, it's quite complex to do manually, and uh, as I said, uh, it's normally done automatically by DIRSYNC. But the important point is that we now have the user Patricia created on-premises with her password, and now she is also being synchronized. The four commands that I've just uh, run were used uh, to connect to the online platform. Office 365. The next command that I'm going to run now is for creating the federated user, new mailbox. I have to specify the first name, last name, the display name, the UPN, two very important pieces of information which act as an anchor between the local Active Directory and the cloud, the federated identity and the immutable ID. The federated identity is uh, a, uh, the result uh, of um, a manipulation of the object GUID for this user. So I take the object GUID for Patricia which is this one. Then I have to convert uh, with this program or your favorite program to base64. Here it is. And this is what I have to write as federated identity. And the immutable ID is uh, equal to the federated identity plus the domain. copy and paste. Okay, now I can run this command and let's see what happens. Now I should see a row here below stating that the user is created online and confirming that this user is now valid. Okay, Patricia Black is created online. Now we can come back to the IT Academy platform and uh, with uh, this user and use uh, the training plan that was provided for her. But before opening IT Academy with Patricia, let me show you how the email service would work with such federation. <coughs> First of all, let's give the Exchange Online license to Patricia. So we log on the administrative console of Office 365. We find the user Patricia that we created with PowerShell. Sorry, this interface is in Italian, but I'm sure that you can perfectly understand. Patricia Black is here. And we need to give her the Exchange Online license, as I said. So I can give her even the full A2 plan for students, which does include Exchange Online plan one. I have to save, I have to set even the country, and it's done. Patricia has the Exchange Online license now. So I can disconnect, okay, and then I can log on uh, Outlook.com as Patricia. So HTTP Outlook.com slash federated domain which is, as we know, ship domain edutinity.net. Okay, now Outlook.com identifies this domain, ship domain .net, which is a federated domain, and redirects the user directly 
to the Shibboleth Federation server. And in fact, this is my machine where we were working before when we uh, set up the user uh, on the Active Directory domain. Now I can write to the user Patricia Black at ship domain dot edu dot net her password continue and now I'm in I'm still back to office 365 outlook.com this is my first access to outlook.com so I will be asked a couple of questions for setting the regional settings and then I can check my email and work normally as uh, I were authenticated by Office 365 directly. Wrong. Okay, so it works. This is my email client, OWA, Office Web Access. Now, and, and I am Patricia Black, as you can see here. Now let's disconnect. This time, I will log on as a student rather than administrator as I did before. But I start always from the same page, I click on member sign in, and then I click here on the right below to log on as an Office 365 student. I click here on the right on go as a student, I click here to log in, and now I'm asked to provide username and password for Office 365. I will use the same credentials, Patricia Black. You can see here that if I write patricia.black at ship domain .net, I cannot write the password because uh, it's uh, disabled. I needed to go to ship domain as before, exactly as before when I had to authenticate for Outlook.com. In this case, I could still have uh, the uh, the token if I had not uh, disconnected uh, from from the previous session. Otherwise, I have to put my username and password: Patricia Black at ship domain ship domain. click on continue and now if the token is valid I'm redirected back to IT Academy as Patricia White that were assigned a training plan. The first time I have to accept uh, the licensing terms here on the right and then I can go to my training plan here and here are my training plans. Please note that if we do not need users defined locally, this work would be much easier with Office 365 non-federated users, because they would have their passwords in the cloud, which would be entered next to the username without any redirections. Well, I hope you could uh, have a better understanding about how to integrate uh, IT Academy with Office 365 and Shibboleth. Enjoy IT Academy! and see you soon.